What's up guys and welcome back. We're here with more of the tournament matches for you today. So I hope you guys enjoyed the first three that came out. I have another three for you today. We have TZN here playing as Pergamon against um, Alexios playing as the Seleucids. So I mean, so two very good factions, two both Greek factions. I'd say Seleucids are the stronger, mainly because they have a larger roster. But um, that's probably the only difference. I mean... Got interesting tactics here. We've got Alexios is going to bring some Tarantine cavalry against uh, TZN's Pergamon uh, noble cavalry or Pergamon's uh, noble cavalry. So we've got like a missile cav, cav versus shot cav. It looks like it's going to be today, um, which is kind of interesting. So it looks like Alexios is going for a slightly more defensive style, um, possibly a play while uh, TZN could be going for like a really like offensive, just slam these guys in, see what damage you can do. His main infantry, uh, no surprise, is the Agema Spears. Probably the most elite unit that um, that Pokemon can bring. They've not got masses, um, which is a real shame in the uh, vanilla. But like, and certainly in like Sebdes and some of the other roster overhauls, they have some better stuff. And he's got some pikemen as well. I don't know if uh, the Sluice brought any pike pikemen actually. He's brought you some spears, which is an interesting choice. He's brought Thoros spears as well. And has he got pikes over here? No more Thoros Spears. Lots of Thoros Spears, actually. No, so he's brought no pikemen, so that could be interesting. That could make the difference in this battle. Whether he can uh, use his pikemen to great effect. He's got Galatian Spears over here ready to support. And here we go, the first volleys have begun. We have Syrian Heavy Archers taking some shots now. The interesting thing also, which like makes these armies so different, is that he's got Javelins instead has... Pokemon instead of archers, so he's got to get a lot closer with his men before he can start throwing any missiles. But his missiles do a lot more damage, so whether you can use them to great effect. And here we go, here comes Seleucids ready, and Pokemon is just you know throwing a few jabbies before they arrive. So here he goes, and this is going to be the first clash of infantry. Yeah, not bad. Oh, I apologize. And there we go, yeah, across the entire line. I don't know what this unit here is doing. This is going to get caught out of formation here. These are Gemma Spears. Yeah, that's not good. These Royal Peltas got caught out there. I mean, those Royal Peltas caught out those uh, Gemma Spears. And they've, like, certainly paid the price for it. They lost 30 men before they actually really reformed that line. The Pikes are going to have to probably put down their Pikes soon. And, um, and start to get involved there. Probably didn't need to actually march them forward, but they probably would have been okay. He's now got Glacian Swords going in over here against Thoros Spears. I think the Spears might be able to hold Glacian Swords. I don't really rate. I do think they're like a poor man's Glacian Legionnaire. Obviously, Pergamon can't bring the Legionnaires. Um, but we'll see what happens. Interesting to see. Okay, so he's now defending the flank with a square formation here. He does have a unit of Glacian... Oh, not actually Glacian. A Glacian Spears, yes, I was right. Um, left. So he needs to be careful though, he's going to let his general get isolated, and he's already lost 20 men. That is shocking. Well, it's not really shocking, but it's like, these guys are pretty nasty, the Tarantine Cap. And there you go, a Gemma Spears in the middle, breaking. Breaking against the general Royal Peltasts. And this unit here broke as well, just because of the reform, and they couldn't quite manage it. So this could be quite interesting. It already looks like Pokemon's going to be at a disadvantage. He really needs to take advantage of cavalry quality. Um, he, he's got the shot cavalry that's going to be able to break stuff. He is winning that fight here, mainly because of Javis and the Pikes. He also needs to use them as an advantage. Eastern Spears going in now. These guys shouldn't hold too well. That's the thing. Um, these are Actually, there's only one unit of Eastern Spears. The quality of infantry after he loses all those uh, Royal Peltas thing he sent in. Yeah, it's all Royal Peltas. As soon as he loses all them, uh, Seleucus is in real trouble. So he needs to protect them as well as possible. And look, you can see these picked hot pikes here. Just like wreck these guys. He's still wrecking them. And the pikes now doing the same amount of damage. And these guys are nearly broken. And it's just the general. The general needs to like get behind the pikes. Start doing some damage. And there we go. Cav is now causing havoc on the infantry here. No surprise there. It means pretty beat up. It actually seems like it's still getting pretty beaten up as well. They can get the greatest of charges. But there you go. Cav uh, Arch is on a break. And I'd say Pergamon is still not out of this quite yet. He's still in a bit of trouble. I don't know where Pergamon's general is. He's over here. He's pretty beaten up. He needs to stop chasing because he's just going to die. Oh, here we go. It could be a charge. No, Tarantine Cabs. I was ready, but the Tarantine Cab was not. Not ready to charge in. 
I'm just keeping it an overview really, just seeing, make sure there's nothing's going on. The cav here is just about to break the uh, infantry. Or the archers, I should say, which are infantry. Oh, there we go, it charges the rear of the general. This is going to be huge. The hacks in the rear. The general may start to break. I keep him in here. Actually, no, get him out, get him out while, he, while these guys are all still down. They haven't reformed. There you go. Sustained. He's wavering. That could be huge. That could do a lot of damage to the morale of the Sluices. But he's steady. Luckily, he's steady. They still got some Royal Peltas units. Um, one pretty fresh, the other one pretty beaten up. They really need to get these guys that surround these pikes. He needs to get his general out of there, but his general's broken. So Sluice is in a real problem here now. His general now broken. He needs to really do the same to uh, Pokemon. He needs to level the playing field, kill the other general. An eye for an eye needs to be done. But it does look like a cavalry. If you can keep this Tarantine cavalry around as well and keep harassing stuff, he might have a chance. He needs to get the pikes, um, which aren't there. Where are the pikes? They're here. He needs to get this unit of pikes. Harass them with uh, horse archers and he'll be fine. And another one right here. He needs to keep harassing. But these Pokemon um, units are just going to mop up these Peltasts here. The pikes aren't even looking the right way. That's how much they care about fighting this. They, they don't even care. They're like, no, these guys aren't worth half time. Yeah, they're still going to poke their way down. They'll kill a lot of them. And there we go, more wavering of uh, these Pixel Heltas. They were very much in the open. They needed taking out. I mean, Tarantine Cavern needs to make sure they actually do flee the battle. There they go, they've gone. Now the Tarantine Cavern needs to surround this Galatian Speed unit. It's losing. Surround it with Cav, and you can break this a lot quicker. I mean, he is slowly breaking everything else as well. It is going to be very close. The difference in general, I think, is still making it in favor of Pergamon. And he's running out of infantry. Though, the general here is wavering for Pokemon. It looks like he's got him. Pretty nasty. Yeah, he's broken as well. It is going to be insanely close now. It looks like it's gone back in favor of Pokemon on the balance of power. But will that shift now because the general's gone? Um, as the sluices, yeah, are doing the right thing. Surrounding this unit here. They need to break it a lot quicker. They need to send in some cavalry charges. So I send this unit to attack here. At this point of the Glacian Spears. You can break it quickly and you can then mobilize these two units. But Pokemon is a lot left. Has a lot left, and yeah. Unfortunately, he's got pikes left. I don't know how much ammo his uh, Tarantine Cav has, if any. But this unit is going to waver. It's going to break. Are we going to get a charge here from the Cav? No, they're just going to go on by. Oh, there we go. Nice charge. That'll break them. They are probably gone now, those Glacian Spears. Yeah, they've had enough. That's enough for them. And here we go. It's going to be two units of Thoros Spears. And a Tarantine Cav that's going to hold against all of this. Don't know if it's going to be done. Um, the Pergamon's uh, Noble Cavalry are pretty nasty. They'll definitely outmatch any attack from the Cavalry here. It's just what happens. Or we'll just fast forward as these guys get in position and see what they do. Pergamon looks like he's just trying to cut off any chance. I think Seleucus is trying to get to his two units of archers or peltasts. He's trying to get all the soft units and weaken them down first, which is not a bad idea. But he's really running out of stuff. And uh, Seleucus is running out of time. On what to do. He really needs to start engaging as well. He's pulling away. He's not actually being offensive. He's being defensive. And there you go, he's wavering. He's wavering anyway because of it. Doesn't so it doesn't really matter. His units have just had enough. They're tired. They're and there you go. So it's gonna be a costly victory. So TZN goes through as Pergamon. So there you go, there are the end results. His cavalry did insanely well. Um that's a bit of a note from the end. Um some of the Royal Peltas did very well for Alexios, but that is the first battle over and done with. Now on to the second. On to the second battle, and this is between Poonslayer and Sharos. Poonslayer playing as Egypt, and we have Sharos over here playing as Bo the Bowie Eye, sorry, I should say. Um, or Boy, as some people love to say it. Um, but yeah, it's a similar setup as uh, with the Bowie Eye, as we saw with Prem. There is only one unit of uh, ranged stuff with Celtic missiles going heavily with his cavalry, and. 
Well, just a lot of sword followers and some oath sworn and a few levy freemen. So it's, does I think it's an identical um, identical roster, um, which is very uh, which is fair enough. Uh, it didn't work for Prem, but maybe it will work for Sharos. Um, I mean, Putin says certainly bringing an interesting army as well as Egypt. He's not bringing many elite units. He's bringing a lot of mid-tier units, and we'll see how that turns out. He's bringing a uh, mercenary Kushite shield woman, women, which I've not seen before on the battlefield, but they look pretty awesome. He is being a bit defensive here, and he's getting chased down for his uh, uh, for his worries here. So here we go. He's Thor spears are going in, and he's going to lure in his heavy horse. Didn't do too bad there encountering that charge. He's going to have got a few kills for it, but I mean, he took a few damage, a few casualties himself. He's got Glacian Swords, which will be a fairly good match to, I mean, some of this stuff. This is actually mostly heavy melee, so I don't know if he will. Most of his infantry, he's bringing Egyptian infantry as well, which uh, I wouldn't say are the greatest. I would say they are one of the weaker units in the, uh, in the game, but I mean, maybe he can get it to work. He's got his Royal Peltas back here, though. So he's got some nasty stuff and he's got Carrion Axeman as his general unit, which is also quite interesting. But he is relying heavily on his elephants. He decided to bring elephants, which is allowed. Um, they just count as a cavalry unit. And he's got camel spears. He's got uh, uh, he's got um, very heavy shot caps. So he's gone really heavy on his uh, cavalry. He's going to try and win with that, clearly. Cavalry and elephants. And he's also got more ranged. So he could do with taking out... Sharos' range units and then also engaging. It looks like they're both going to rotate before they start. So I'm just going to quickly fast forward because we don't need to see them constantly be moving around. Here we go. Some Thoros Spears here going to do some uh, charging. And they're going to form square formation. A smart move. Probably something you might want to do to hold the flanks. And then everything else can push on in the center. But I mean these two seem to be messing around a lot. Not a lot of attacking going on just yet. Need to start getting in there, really, and start doing some attacks. Here we go. Here goes the attacks. It's going to be Egyptian infantry first against sword followers. Not, uh, probably not a fair match. I'd say the sword followers will probably win this quite easily. Yeah, look at that. Egyptian infantry already getting absolutely wrecked. Um, and then same on this side. Egyptian infantry, as soon as they clash, just look at that. Just getting absolutely destroyed. We have the missiles firing in from the rear. I mean, just like everyone, there you go. Already the first bit of wavering. The f there you go. The Egyptian infantry has gone just like that. Um, now he's got a problem with his cavalry. This cavalry out here on the side is going to be a problem. Camels are really good against cavalry. They're really good at countering cavalry. Because camels scare cavalry. So that you could do really well there. It's going to be a charge here. Oh, they got a really good volley on them Thoros Spears. That was insanely good. I mean, down to 56. I think they were already pretty brilliant up. And here he goes, he's going to send in his cav, or his camels, and then his uh, heavy shot cav, or very heavy shot cav, going, and they will definitely do some damage to those spear followers. They'll have done insanely well. Those uh, camels also doing probably okay. He's now supporting the fight. Yep, yeah, the, the sword followers are losing. So this could be winnable here, but I mean, he's definitely sending in more infantry. You can afford to send in more infantry. The elephants would do very well over here now. Good. Another good thing for Egypt is that because he's brought very few archers, has Bowie Eye, he can't scare him off with fire ammo. He's going to have to just focus them down with his, uh, with his slingers and hope and pray that they die soon. They are pretty bloodied up. But he certainly needs to break this front line, does Bowie Eye. And then he can certainly do some damage to the stuff behind. But he's still got a lot of split sword followers and he's not yet sent forward all his oath sworn. And here we go. He's going to start matching him. Um, and stuff. He's tried to send in his uh, the I'm just going to call him very heavy shock because the Ptolemaic is hard to say when you're commentating. But they are in there, and this shock cap is going to get munched up. And he, he needs to send in these. Uh, I mean, he's going to break this levy freeman. That's great. But then fighting the heavy horse. This is melee against shock. Shock's just going to die. He has broken this front line though with his elephants. Oh, that's that's bad though. I saw a lot of elephants fall there. They are down to only about. Three or four. Four, I think. And they're going mad. They are out of control. Um, Egypt needs to just, like, make sure that they... It gets out of the path of the elephants. Just let the elephants do their damage. Start engaging these next lot of sword followers. And he needs to really get the, the general. I don't know if he's got any shock cav left. I don't think he does. They're already just tied up now in combat. But he is going to break this heavy horse. And now he, this shock's not tied up. He needs to engage this noble horse. 
Engage the Noble Horse and then... Or actually surround this Oath Sworn. Surround this Oath Sworn would actually be a good target. But taking up the Noble Horse would also be huge. Because he's already really, really low on morale, I imagine, is Bowie Eye. Because of all the elephants just charging around doing damage. And he has got them back under control. And now going after Oath Sworn. Not a bad target. But a lot of them have already been beaten up. So I wonder how long these guys will last. And it looks like they're trying to just get through, which is fine. They're elephants. They're kind of more entitled for a pull through. I don't know if he is even pulling through. But I'd certainly get over here and help this fight out. Because there's so much cavalry here. And elephant does so elephants do so well against cavalry. Definitely worth... And here we go. Definitely worth throwing them in. And here we go. This is going to be the charge. Into the back of the sword follows first. Not a bad charge. Oh god, look at that. Causing havoc. And there you go, already ha that'll be supporting that uh, mercenary Kushite uh, spear women out and the Thor of Spears. And there you go, 55 sword followers already wavering and they're going to go just like that. And that cavalry is probably, it's winning now, but I don't know how long that will last. The elephants need to really get in there and just carry on that charge. And the cav's going to pull out because it's realizing it's not got infantry support anymore. Well, it does. It actually has one. That's one infantry in there. It probably could have carried that fight on. But the general's in here now. And he's frightened by the elephants. This is going to be huge. Can he win this with the elephants? Can he win this with the elephants? He needs... To, whatever happens, Bowie Eye needs to keep that Celtic Slinger unit alive so he can focus it down. Focus the elephants down. That is how he's going to win this fight. Because otherwise, the elephants are just going to run havoc. They are going to run havoc. Not, they're not getting great charges now, though. They seem to be tired. And that's another one gone. I think that's two left now. But two elephants is still a problem. And there you go. He's already going straight for those slingers at the back. And I wonder if this one's even going to make it. No, it's not. Just fell short. And the other one's uh, very much trapped up in combat. And it's now going mad. A shame. So I think Bowie Eye's probably got this now. Mainly because he's taken out the elephants. I think the elephants were just such a... They could have broken everything. Like here, if they got rid of the... He needed to get the calves to take out the slingers. And then he was fairly... And the general. And then he was okay, I think. Because the elephants could have just scared everything else off the map. It would have been... It's, it still could be closed. The elephant... No, there you go. The elephants are gone. Like one, even one elephant is still danger. Certainly in like a 1v1. But I think... Boei has possibly got this. Egypt is looking very low. Both sides still have their generals. So there's no luck of like... Break, having a chain route. And he's out of cav. I mean, the general is... Oh, actually, no, he's got even a uh, unit over here. So he's not even got to throw in his general and risk that. So the general could probably just take out all this, uh, these archers here, which is just about to happen. That's going to be an execution. And then these spear followers probably will overwhelm all this infantry. Uh, maybe not the royal peltasts, but certainly all the spears that will get overwhelmed. And he's carrying axemen. Yeah, they're not great. They're the, they're the cheapest general unit you can bring, I'm pretty sure, as Egypt. And it shows. They get absolutely munched up, literally. They're using, like, a wooden shield and some tunics, and that's it. They're not great. They are not great. And there you go. The uh, archers getting just killed off and those mercenary Kushite spearwomen. It was an interesting roster that... Uh, that Poonslay brought as Egypt, but you know, it's just not pulled off in the end, unfortunately. I definitely think it could have on a different day. Like, if the elephants had got through to the. and the cav had got through to the archers, and the general had been caught up and killed, definitely could have worked. But it was unfortunate, and there we go. That is going to wrap up the second battle of today. A costly enemy victory indeed. Egypt played very, very well. His elephants getting 200 kills. Excellent. And his. The general for Bowie Eye also nearly getting 200 kills. So there are the end results if you want to have a look at them. And now on to the third and final battle. So the third and final battle. And it is a bit of Arverni civil war. We have two Arverni uh, armies here today. We have uh, Matus over here playing with this one that I am uh, looking at. And over on the far side being shot at is Skosta uh, for our final match today. And it looks like... They've gone with ever so slightly different armies. So Mattis has decided to bring four units of Gallic Hunters compared to Skosta's two units. And um, Skosta's bringing, I'd say, I think he's bringing 
Same amount of cav, actually. So they've got the same amount of cav. I think he's bringing a lot more chosen swords, though. While Mattis is bringing just generally um, less uh, less chosen swords and oath sworn. And he's bringing some chosen spearmen, which is an interesting decision. He's going to support his um, cavalry with the... Well, with the spears, basically. I don't know really what else to say. I mean, there's not much. We're just waiting for a, a real clash. And here we go. It looks like Skos is going to be one that's going to send his boys in. Yeah, he's bringing a, mainly a front line of Chosen Swords. He's got a few who want to hold the line, but not many. And it's kind of the same on the other side with Matus. But, I mean... He's got... I'd say he's got ever so slightly less Chosen Swords, but I could be wrong. It could just be how they're set out. I mean, it looks like they're both just happy to let their heavy horse keep running in front of their front line to just soak up, take it in the arrows that, like, the archers are firing. I mean, it's not a bad tactic, but, I mean, you kind of want to keep your cavalry alive, and it's certainly weakening them every volley that hits them. I'd be focusing down generals at this point. I know it's a scummy move, but it's a good way to certainly uh, get an early lead, focus on the general a little bit, scare him off, force him back. I mean, going for this heavy horse isn't a bad idea, but, I mean, that heavy horse is just not going to make it there in time. The archers will see that long, long way off. And here we go. This is going to be the main front. I don't know. I say it's going to be the first attack, but, I mean, Skos is just going to stand here and just look at the enemy, cheer him, like, yes, yes. We're here to fight at some point. And this heavy horse just gets nearer and nearer. And there you go. That's the price of luring around with heavy horse. You get uh, javied. Because every unit in Rome 2 has javies. And javies are nasty. And that unit's now basically redundant. And Skost is uh, probably the first one to really lose out there. He's lost his first unit of cavalry. So he's now 2-1 to one on the cavalry. Well, th um, he's still got his general. But he doesn't really want to commit his general. And there you go. So it looks like... Um, the first charge in here by Matos has got a very good charge. He formed the diamond wedge. It's going to be good. And he's did frenzy charge. And he's got spears in there now. Really, uh, we need to see the unit here of those one go up to support. Skost is uh, definitely needing that unit to go up and support. And now the Cavs engaging over here. And this cavalry unit is so small. Don't even, I wouldn't even bother like supporting it with Javis or anything like that. And the front line of infantry is starting to collide as well. Oh, that's a good volley there, though, by the Chosen Swords into the side. They weren't quite looking the right way. And they showed off enough of their side to get enough javies in there and kill quite a lot of men. But yeah, it's a big, long line of Chosen Swords now just engaging. So who gets the better javy, char uh, javy throw is really all that matters. Both sides killing about two men each. So it's really going to come, come down to what happens on the flanks. And the cavalry is certainly going to be king here in this battle, I, I think. I've not seen it. This is my first time of seeing it as well. So I'm in the dark just as much as you guys. And there you go. He's focusing down the general. Forcing him to pull back. Not have much of an aura around his men. And now it's Chosen Swords versus Oathsworn here. So that's going to be different. That's going to be... You imagine Oathsworn will win that fight. But a charge from the cavalry may balance us out. Good charge. Oh god. Look at the amount of heavy horse that just tipped over the front line there. And this unit of Chosen Swords definitely needs to get in there and surround and help support that. And there you go. A nice charge back into the general. Now is the time. Yeah, get this spear in here. Help support this noble's horse out. Okay, he's going to surround the Chosen um, the chosen Swords here. Interesting. He thinks he's going to win that. Actually, yes, he does need the support here. 28 against, uh, well, a lot more. And the archers really need to start focusing down this. Well, and the general here, obviously. He's actually losing this. He actually is losing that. And there we go. That's a very good charge. Oh, a very good javy throw, sorry. And they're going to catch the general. They might do. It's going to be close. Yeah, and he's just recently died. There you go. So Skoster is now without a general. That is going to be huge. And there you go. You can see it. This unit 51 wavering gone. Now I'd say the battle is very much in favor of Matos, who's now holding a very strong front line. His cavalry going into the rear here. It's like, if I do this in cinematic mode, you just can't tell who's fighting who. I mean, you kind of can. This is uh, Matus here. Skosa's lines here. Cavalry in the back of Mat for Matus. And there we go. 
These heavy horse now are going to probably start to break these guys. I mean, they are still winning decisively here because that's Oswald. They're pretty nasty. Archers here definitely start going running these guys down. Just make sure they get off the battlefield. I won't bother about the front line. The front line's done. You can start overwhelming stuff for your infantry now. And there we go. The cavalry just goes in. That's... Oh, and he had an oath one unit as his general. That was another difference that uh, Matus did. So he did uh, give himself another infantry unit instead of another cavalry unit. We have an oath one unit all the way out here. This is so late to join the battle, and it's like joining now when the battle's over. It needed to be getting in there and supporting that cavalry in this cavalry fight here so much earlier. Which is a shame, so I just don't know if Skosa forgot about it or what. But here we go. It looks like he's sending his archers. Don't know why they didn't just send the general in, but I mean, this heavy horse will do the damage. Mop these guys up. Yeah, nice little charge there. And that'll break, and then that's kind of it. Probably the most decisive out of all of them. Actually, no, I'd say Egypt was possibly. But I think, unfortunately for Puni, he was in a really rough position. This one could have gone either way at any point, but as soon as the general died, was by far and away the... Uh, the final nail in the coffin. Though he's going to certainly get one more victory and break these chosen swords. Ah, uh, been held, holding at 12 men. Jeez. They held all of this back. But it's all now wavering. The general dying is just... It's just too much for them. It's just a unit of uh, chosen swords holding. And there you go. They all waver and break. Oath sworn. Chosen swords. The lot. And a close victory for the Arverni. As they beat the Arverni. Um, so yeah, so Skosa actually did bring a smaller army because he brought more cavalry. Um, but that's kind of it. You can see their uh, rosters there. And also, I guess, they brought a few more units of something else. Um, I think he did bring... Well, it's just because he brought more archers, I guess. I guess that's it. I don't know if, what Skosa did differently then. Really, he looks like they brought similar amounts of Chosen Swords. Actually, no. Chosen Swords. Um... Uh, um, oh jeez, uh, Mattis brought more. Sorry, that's what I was trying to think of. I was trying to think of his name. I was looking there and was like, that's not Mattis, but it is Mattis who sent it in. Um, but anyway, guys, I'm sure you enjoyed all of those tournament battles. I'm pretty sure, if I don't put it up in this one, I will put up in the next video a table for you guys to look at. You can see how the fixtures are now looking um, for the quarterfinals. There is one, battle, one more battle that needs to take place, but uh, I... I've been trying to get in contact with them and they haven't quite organized it. So I will be deciding what will happen with that one um, going into the core finals. Who will win that? But yes, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have, please do remember to leave a like, subscribe and a comment if you want to carry on seeing more of the tournament battles take place. And if you want to uh, know as what goes on as and when, please do join the Discord, um, which will be in the description down below. Hope you guys enjoyed. And until next time, Legionnaires, 